My name is Daniela. I've been doing web development for 10 years now, and um, I'm a front-end developer. And um, I'd like to, to awaken the enthusiasm for doing things that aren't really a job. Um, and um, this basically started when I worked at ID Media. I uh, was one of few front-end developers, and as such, I, um, I originally have a background in computational linguistics. That means I learned serious programming. Um, but I was uh, one of the few people at ID Media who didn't have a problem getting their hands dirty with JavaScript, for example, while a lot of the other uh, back-end programmers were like, no, not gonna get there, not gonna go there. And so um, it somehow became um, my reputation that you could, could come to me with strange projects, uh, which others would have rejected. And so I, I did a lot of really weird stuff, and um, this somehow found its way into my CV. And um, so, yeah, it, it's, it's sort of... Um, it's, it's sort of a hobby, you know. I, I will probably be back here next year talking about, you know, the joys of pixel pushing and the joys of making sure that the website is just so and everything works and so on. There's a very fine form of satisfaction to be found in that. But today I'm going to talk about the weirder stuff. So, for example, I spent um, about eight weeks in Second Life, um, which uh, all of the serious programmers said, no not going to happen. Um, but I had a lot of fun. You know, I was standing on this island. ID Media had its own island in Second Life. And I was watching a moon rise every four, four hours or so. And uh, I was working in a... Um, uh, I was working in a, in a 3D environment. I was working for the grocery store Plus, and I was animating for their island. I was animating kleine Preise, uh, little uh, things that were supposed to, to run around. And, uh, you know, if, if they were to, to bang into something, they were to sort of to reflect and walk past. And then if they um, uh, interacted with an avatar, they would sort of, you know, do something. And so I was basically sitting on my beach and... Um, uh, trying to animate those kleine Preise. And it was kind of funny because in, um, in Second Life, in Linden scripting language, there are two ways of locomotion. Either you sort of turn your agent into a, into a direction and then sort of give them a push, um, or you um, walk from point to point in the, in the uh, coordinate system. Both of them have a, have a distance limit. And so the, the pushing would have been nicer, but it, was not, um, it didn't have a stable speed. But so it, it, it would sort of looked funny. And so um, I had to work them from point to point. So I had to uh, turn them in a way uh, from the angle that I just uh, randomly assigned to them. And then all of a sudden, Pythagoras was my best friend because I had to walk them uh, through the, um, uh, through the well, in this case, a 2D system because we neglected the third dimension at this point. And um, so this is, you know, it's um, later I decided that, that uh, Second Life wasn't my thing because, you know, all of the griefers and so on and so forth. But it was really fun because, for example, um, it wasn't um, uh, an environment that was conductive to, to professional uh, software development. You know, there was no way of uh, saving anything but the current uh, version of what you were doing. And um, if, if the, the second live server um, died on you while you were working on it, everything was gone. Um, and so it was really funny. And then um, uh, Plus actually had a sort of a party, uh, a floating party island. And so they needed uh, some way of getting people up there and so I, I wrote a, um, uh, a lift basically which was a, a, a great circle on the floor uh, sort of uh, implicit uh, where bubbles would uh, in, in uh, regularly bubbles would appear and you could step onto them and then drive up and step out and you know there were sort of uh, different landing uh, spots for these or starting spots for these bubbles and they would you know in turn so that you basically the whole time you had like a spiral of these bubbles you know which were translucent and glowing and you were they, they kept just going up it was, it was actually beautiful and it was one of those things where you sort of walk past your computer forget for a moment that you were the one that wrote it and say hey that's pretty awesome, actually, you know? And so, as I said later, they tried to, to sell me as the, the second life expert, and I said, no, please don't. That was quite fun for once, but no, um, which is um, an important thing. I think that sometimes you don't know exactly what you do, but it can be equally important to figure out what you don't want to do. And so that was very 
um, that was very interesting for me. And another thing that we did at ID Media, um, the, the tragedy of ID Media was that they used to be five years too early with everything they invented. And so we basically started uh, working with sort of video on demand kind of things uh, in 2006 or 2007. And uh, we wrote for BMW, we wrote one of the first uh, German Silverlight applications. We were giggling a lot about the whole Flash Player thing. Um, but we wrote one of the first things, and it was basically, you got to imagine, um, a stage that had sort of a highway uh, um, um, image to it. It was glassy and bluish, and there were sort of billboards coming towards you. You know, and um, what we did for that is basically we, we wrote in Silverlight, we wrote the sort of the rendering of this 3D animation because you had your vanishing point and if you have things coming towards you, you have to calculate A, uh, the rate at which they um, get bigger and B, um, the, the further they come towards you, the, the, the bigger the steps between the, the different uh, rendering cycles become. And so we basically wrote a small... Um, uh, a small yeah, 3D rendering engine, so to speak. And uh, what was rather cool is that on these billboards there were videos and they were running, which was a cool thing in 2006. And not only were they running and they were resizing and repositioning themselves in each cycle, but since everything was glassy and blue, um, there was, a, there was a, um, a reflection of them. So we had a running video that was reflected downwards, standing on its head, it was distorted and it had an opacity layer lying on it, an opacity gradient so that it seemed to be fading out. And we, at any time of the... Um, uh, of the moment we had like eight or so on the stage, eight running uh, videos with their distorted reflection coming towards you. And again, this was one of those things, you know, you come back from getting yourself a coffee and say, hey, that's pretty neat. You know, I mean, uh, I shudder to think at um, what it actually did on, on, you know, via the internet, um, uh, on, the, on the current uh, uh, hardware of the day. I'm quite sure it wasn't fun. Um, but, you know, it was one of the things that, that I would have never uh, done if I had sat there and said, you know, silver light, nah. You know, and um, we originally did that for a... Um, uh, for a, for a, for the Extopia for a, a trade fair, <clears throat> and so um, we actually did an overnight shift uh, the very day before that. And again, you know, um, some of my coworkers were sitting there like, "Damn, the things that you let them do to you," you know. But I had the fun of my life, you know. Uh, it was we were pair programming, and. Um, there is, if, if you get so fucking tired that, uh, that the, the membranes between the brains become really thin and you, you feel like you're this close to mind melt and, and the mind melt is only, you know, prevented because all of a sudden your partner is actually um, uh, drooling into your shoulder. And so I, I basically had the time of my life. I mean, I could have insisted that I'm not doing any, any overtime and very often I do actually, but I had the time of my life, you know? And so, um, especially, um, uh, me having a lot of fun is very often connected to um, me having to use maths that I haven't used since high school. So, for example, for the Shure website, um, which is um, an audio equipment uh, producer, uh, I did a, um, a store finder in Google uh, Maps. And um, it was, for example, it was not exactly trivial to figure out, you know, if you have a standpoint in geo coordinates um, and you have a, a set of uh, stores with their own geo coordinates, you know, um, ordering them. Uh, in distance to the to the standpoint of the user isn 't trivial, and so again, this was a lot of fun, and there was a lot of mass involved um, but yeah this this was you know again something that that wasn 't strictly part of my job description, but I had a lot of fun doing it, and so this is what i 'm <clears throat> Um, what I'm encouraging people to do is to just, you know, be open. If people come up to you with crazy stuff, maybe there is something to be. There is most certainly there will be something to be learned, uh, and if it's only um, that you decide that that's something that you never want to do again. <laughs> We are.